Ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing this morning? Yeah. Any South Londoners in the house? Yeah, because yeah, I'm from South London. <laughs> Something remarkable happened three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, I was invited to 10 Dining Street. And you all must be wondering, why did you get invited, correct? <laughs> Let me take you to my journey and tell you why I was invited to 10 Dining Street. I was born in Sierra Leone, West Africa. I came to the UK at the age of 13 to join my mum. You see, in, in Africa, in Sierra Leone, in the in, in Caribbean, in India, we, we look at England like it's heaven. I remembered when my grandma said to me, you're going to go to England to join your mom. I was so excited. I thought, oh my gosh, this is it, England. See, we don't call London, we don't call London, London. We call it England. It sounds bigger. So I came to London, I came to England. I was really disappointed. <laughs> it was really not what the hype was about. My mum just moved in a new flat. She had my little brother James, he's sitting there, and there was nothing in the flat. I'm thinking to myself, but this is England. What's going on? Am I in Africa or something? And, and it was cold in Sierra Leone. If you've ever seen any movie or Nollywood movie, you know it's all about outside. Everybody's out and you're playing. So me coming over, there was nothing in the house. I couldn't play. I had no friend. I, I was crying. So I said, it's okay. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to meet my friends. I'm going to get some new friends. So I went to school. I've got to say, school was a little bit better. There was two sides to school. I never got bullied, you know, or you African, no. The girls in school was very fascinated by me. I used to always be singing, you know, my, they said, how do you know Michael Jackson, you're from Africa? How do you, because I used to love singing, you know, I went to, I went to in, in school in Sierra Leone, me and my cousin used to do dancing competition, we used to do singing, so I got that with me. And the girls in my school, they were fascinated by me. I was very popular in school. So thank God, I look forward to go to school because go, have you guys got tomboy in Africa? I, literally, every single day I go to school, like a question sent to me. One thing about school I didn't like was I had stammering. My mom had stammer, my mom's father had stammer, so that, that person to me. So when it was my turn to read in class, I used to always go to the toilet because I was really scared of speaking out or reading. When I was 14, my mom was diagnosed with schizophrenic. So now I came to London, 13, exciting to, to be in England. I've got this disability because I can't speak. And now my mother that I'm looking up to just been diagnosed with schizophrenic. Yeah, so I was really, really sad. So my mother had my little brother who was one year old. So both my, myself and my stepdad looked after my brother while my mom was unwell. So I struggled with my stammering for years. And when I was 16, I remember saying to my mom, my life is over. I must, I must well be dead. Because for you, to, for you to be somebody, you have to speak. And I can't speak. How can I be somebody? And I remember mom saying to me, you better, you better start having confidence in yourself. So what did I do, ladies and gentlemen? You might wonder, how did you, how did you end up standing here speaking to us like this, which you're stammering? I decide to get help. At 16 years old, I went to WH Smith and I went to the self-help area 
where you can get books about helping yourself. And I sat on the floor and I was just reading all these different books. And, I'm, and I came across a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffries. That book was really good. Not only it tells you why you might be fearful, but every chapter will give you practical examples of how you can take a step to conquer your fear. So I read that book and I, and I would go every, every, as soon as I finish one book, I would go back, get a different book, just read, 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 and my confidence really grew. My dream was to become an actress and a singer and a dancer. So because my confidence grew, I, I was accepted at Itali Conte Theatre School in Wimbledon. There's a very, very successful theatre school. A lot of successful actors and actresses attended that school. I was still stammering, and, but I keep pushing. 1999, my friend had a birthday. She called me up. She goes, I'm looking for a DJ. And I said, I had DJ. I was just joking. I want to be an actress. I don't want to be a DJ. Because for me, growing up in Sierra Leone, DJing is for a guy. And I was very feminine, feminine girl. And when I was growing up, I said DJing. If you're a female, you're more of a tomboyish DJ. Like, yeah, I'm a DJ. So you don't expect someone like myself, you know, I want to be a singer. You think, yeah, I want to be like, you know, a singer. You look you're more feminine or pretty. I didn't see a DJ female like that when I was young. So I was playing with my friends. So on the day for the birthday, my friend, had, my friend was not very happy. So I said to my, my friend, I said, what's wrong? She goes, nobody's dancing. So I said, OK, then, leave that to me. So I went up to the DJ and I said, I know big tune. Show me what to do. And the DJ said, OK. So he showed me how to just bring the song in and out. I said, OK, then. So I went on his library of music and I started selecting a song. Something really phenomenal happened, ladies and gentlemen. The moment I start playing a music, everyone starts to dance. So I sat there on the stage thinking, what is going on? The buzz, the excitement, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I started playing and playing. And when I finished, the guys came up to me, they said, we didn't know you was a DJ, wow. It's my birthday next week. I'm confused. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, is this DJing? Somebody tell me, is this DJing? And I, and I literally said at that moment, 1999, I am going to be a DJ. It was the end. I went home and I said to my mom, mom, I'm going to be a DJ. So the next day I went to Cash Converter and I bought exactly what that DJ had, two CDs and a mixer. And I would practice at my house. And then a, a week or two, I went to my local youth center and I said to them, I want to have a night. Every Friday, I want to bring my DJ equipment and I want to DJ. And they said yes. So that's the picture. In 2000, my first ever DJ at my local youth centre. So I had this creativity in mind. I said, I want to look, I don't want to just be any DJ. It's like, you can see, I had a hat. I had, you know, I was trying to create this look, this, this DJ look. So I would, they used to call me funky, you know. I would go in, I had my hat, think, because obviously I wanted to be a performer. So even though I was a DJ, I kind of trying to bring that performer into my DJing. And then that's how I started DJing. And that led me to do various events all over my, all, all over my, my community, my Baptist church. I started to do events, getting all UK, all UK, all young people. It was in the Voice newspaper. It was very, very successful. And then I woke up one day and I said to my friend, I want to start a club called Raw Talent. I said, I want to start a club to help young people that might have raw talent in singing, dancing, but they lack the confidence. So my friend helped me. We put a plan together. I approached Princess Trust. I said, I've got this wicked idea. I want to help young people to build their confidence. They said, yeah, we loved it. So I got funded by Princess Trust. And I get some funding, and I employed professional vocalists, singers, volunteers. And we had a great 
a year just working with young people and helping them. It was such a huge success. I had an award from Princess Trust. I had um, a Royal Society of Art approaching me saying, we admire what you did with the young people. And I remember when we did the huge event, we had the Daily Guardian coming in to interview me. And the first thing they said to me was, what's your name? I was still stammering. My stammering hadn't gone. I was still stammering. And I still got that DVD. I could not say what my name was. It took me five minutes to say my name was. So the Royal Society, Society said to me, what would you like to improve done? And I said, I do want to work on my public speaking. And they introduced me to Toastmaster International. If it wasn't for Toastmaster International, ladies and gentlemen, I would not be standing here today speaking to you. Toastmaster International is all over the world. No matter what part you went in, in London, if you go to the internet at Toastmaster, you would find a Toastmaster club locally and it can help you if you want to build on your confidence and leadership skill. In 2012, I woke up with another idea. I'm always waking up with an idea. And, I, and the good thing about me is I just run with them. I don't sit down, like Drew said, people have action and they sit down having, I don't do that. I just run with them. So I phone my friend up and I say to my friend, I've got this huge idea. I want to have an agency, an agency for all female DJs. And she goes to me, it's just up your street. You did raw talent. You can do that easy. I said, so important to have the right friends around you. That could have been a wrong friend. <laughs> and she could have said to me, have you got the money? Do you think you can do it? It's so important to have the right people around you. Positive people. So, of course, she, she empowered me and said, yeah, Tamara said, I can do it. I'm going to do this. And then I started, I started an all-female DJ agency. That's our logo. And that's some of our girls. So we have, we run the world female DJs all over the world. We've got DJs in Miami, New York, Scotland, Manchester, Liverpool. We've got DJs all over. We've got over 30 female DJs. And... We, and we've got over 20 or 30 on our waiting list as well. And every day we're getting female DJs coming in. We want to join, we run the world, we want the world, we want to join the world. After, after I started the age, I started with Run the World Agency so people would know about female DJs. Because when, DJ, when I was DJing, nobody knew about female DJs. Unless you're in a radio station like BBC, Capital, Kiss FM, nobody knows you. Who are you? I'm a DJ. <laughs> really? Well, I don't know your name, but I wanted, I wanted a way by you can be a DJ. You don't have to be in a radio station to be a successful DJ. That's what I wanted to do, and I've been able to do that. L majority of my DJs are not on a radio station. They're not on TV, but they're DJing all over the world. So it's myself. I've never been in a radio before, but I've DJ all over the world and DJ with bigger brand. And I'm proud to say that we've DJ for, we've DJ in Canada, Italy, Norway, Sweden, um, Italy. Just this week, two of my girls are DJing in Mexico for us, and two will be flying to Dominican Republic to DJ for us next month. We've been nominated for various um, awards. Last year, we was we was nominated. We we, kept, we made finalists for Business of the Year, and I myself was nominated for Business Woman of the Year. This year, I was nominated for Precious Award, and so on and so forth. So back to my story at 10 Downing Street. I was sitting there in my office doing my work. Is this China? Yeah, I'm calling from 10 Downing Street. I was thinking, whoa, you're going to be teaching in 10 Downing Street. <laughs> How can I help you? We're doing a reception for Black History Month and we'd like to invite you to come down. I was really shocked. So I said, wow, that's so amazing. I was meant to say that to myself. And it came out. And she goes, no, you were amazing. <laughs> 
So I said, when is it? And she said, it's, it's, it's the next two weeks. We want you to come down. We've read your story. We think you're amazing. It would be great if you can make it. I said, thank you. She goes, we're going to send you the invitation. So keep, keep an eye on it. I said to my, I said to my mom and friend, somebody just pranked me. Somebody just pranked me. People are so evil. Why would they do that to me? So but she, well, she did it. She called me on, on no number, which make it even worse. But then she left me a number as well. She goes, this is my number. If anything, call me. So I said to my friend, check it on the internet, because she said, legit. <laughs> so we went to the internet, but it was a Scotland number. So I was like, see, I knew it. People are so evil. And then I said, but it's OK. She said she's going to send me an invitation, so let's wait. She said, mid, 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 nah, mid, mid afternoon. So I so, so called my friend, what time is mid? <laughs> so, and? The invitation, the, and the invitation came. Oh, we're done. Where's the invitation? I go like, and it came. Miss China Lawan. I was like, yes. Actually, I still wasn't really sure. <laughs> so I took the email, put it on Google, and it came out. She works for the government. I was like, yes. She works for the government, guys. <laughs> so I was like, I was so excited. I was telling everyone, I was like, oh my gosh, can you believe this? And then so I, called, so I emailed her. Then somebody else I knew said to me she was invited. She just got an uh, email. And I said, oh, I got called. <laughs> you know? I said, oh, I got called. Maybe I'm a special person for the event. And I said, let me, but she wasn't into chef was a prank as well. Because I said, did Rosemary call you? I goes, oh my gosh, she called me. Goes, and, then, and then she realized that, you know, so I said, oh, I got, maybe I'm a, a, a special guest for the event because I got called. And then I messaged Rosemary. I said, Rosemary, I said, is there anything you want me to help you do for the day? And she goes, we're going to think about it and get back to you. So two days for the event, she called me. She goes, oh, the team wanted you to DJ. Can you do, can you do a 30-minute reception? Who is going to say no to DJ for 10 down the street? You know? So I said, um, I said yeah, so I'd be more than happy to do so. So, so I, so that's a picture of me DJ and a 10 down. I mean, look at the setting, guys. Look at that. I'm gonna laminate this, like, you know, put it in my wall. You know, I mean, look at the setup, look at that, look at the, the art, it's just incredible, you know? And also that, guys, they actually, if you go to Dan, if you go to 10 Danish your Instagram page, they've got my picture in there. <laughs> like, you know, I've got all this, um, this DJ group, having a group saying China is the first DJ ever. Not only to DJ on, on, on Downing Street, but actually got IG picture at 10 Downing Street. Every now and then I just go and check my page. I'm like, is it still there? Yeah, it's still there. You know, but what I want to leave with you guys today is in life, you can be a victim or you can, you, or you can be a winner, but we can be both. You can be a winner and a victim at the same time. You've got to choose. I chose to win. Is it easy to choose to win? No, it's not. You have, you have to work on yourself. You've got to know yourself. I knew, I was blessed to know that I had a disability, which was stammering. And I, I was confident to know that if I cannot work on that, I'm not going to be standing here today and speak to you guys. And I did something about it. It's going to take sacrifice. <coughs> it's going to take a lot of crying, researching. <coughs> but you have to make that choice. I chose to win. And I haven't won. I am still winning. Thank you. Mm -hmm.